What's going on guys? It's Becca Switzer with Roof Sales Mastery and author of Diamonds in the Sky. People say all the time, success is up to you, right? Your success is up to you. And people like to use that mantra and say that, but at the same time, when people see other successful people, they'll say, yeah, but well, they have that body because of genetics. Or, well, they're where they're at the t today because they came from an affluent family. Their parents paid for everything. They had a good start. Or, yeah, but they lucked out. They like, they've always had that natural talent and that's just kind of carried them through. Or they got lucky, they caught a break and they found, you know, a job they're passionate about right off the bat and they're just, they're lucky. Or whatever. And I wanted to share a little bit of my story today because that is such bullshit. <laughs> I call those failure stories. When people, you either have a success story or a failure story. Now everybody who has a success story knows that it is sprinkled with failures, right? Failure stories are part of success stories. But people who aren't where they want to be or where they should be have a failure story. That sounds like, oh, well, I didn't ever get any help from my parents or I just haven't found what I want to do yet. So, you know, that's why I'm not where I want to be and, or whatever. When I was 14, the day I turned 14 years old, I was like, okay, I want to be able to get a car by the time I'm 16. The day I turned 14, I had my mother drive me to the Mall of the Bluffs where I applied to work at a fast food restaurant called Taco John's where I worked until I was almost 19 years old. That's where I worked. And I did that every single week after school on weekends because I wanted to make money. I didn't want to have any excuses. Then I went to college for two years and here, <laughs> I'm slipping on some mud here. I went to the University of Iowa for two years. Everybody, that just kind of seemed to be the thing to do, right? You graduate from high school, all your friends go to college, you pick a college, you go. And supposedly that's where you get your golden ticket and you get a degree, whatever. <clears throat> Which obviously if you've heard my videos is not what I believe, but that's what I did at the time. And my parents did pay for my first two years of school. Um, so I was fortunate for that, even though I didn't know what the hell I was doing at college. I was basically just drinking and sleeping and eating SpaghettiOs and McDonald's every day <laughs> and gaining 35 pounds. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> but I went to school for those two years. And even during then, I had, I was making money three different ways. One, I was working at Cold Stone Creamery. <laughs> there was a Cold Stone like ice cream shop that opened up and I would work the morning shift in the winter. It was so cold. If anybody's from Iowa or has been to Iowa, you know the winters are bitter fucking cold. I would get up, I had to walk because it, you just had to walk. There's nowhere to park. So I'd like walk my frozen Eskimo ass to Cold Stone to open at like six or seven in the morning, you know, before classes and stuff like that, work a morning shift. And the other thing I was doing was, cause I wasn't making enough money doing that, I couldn't get enough hours. I was supplementing that income by going and selling my plasma, <laughs> which by the way, I hate needles. That is not easy for me. I pass out. Like when I had to get my health insurance uh, or my whole life insurance policy, they drew my blood and I fainted twice. <laughs> okay, needles, not my thing, but I was like, okay, I'm a kid with <laughs> no skills, no resources, I have a fast food job. I need to make money somehow. And with the plasma, you could go twice a week. And if you went once a week, it was $20. You'd get an extra $40 if you went uh, a second time. So I could make up to $60 a week selling plasma and fainting and feel, feeling super nauseous. By the way, during that time, <laughs> side note, I was struggling very badly with eating disorders and I was anemic as hell. I wasn't getting the nutrients I needed. So when I went to deliver plasma or give plasma, I like, it was very difficult for me because I was weak. My iron was way too low. Um, so that was a challenge in and of itself, but we won't get off on a tangent. And then when I went back on breaks, whether it was for Christmas break, spring break, Thanksgiving break, even the odd weekend, whatever, holiday, I would, back in my hometown, go and work at Taco John's again. I'd clock in, I'd serve people tacos in the mall, and I hated it. Nobody likes fast food, it's a shitty job, right? But I did it. So I was doing everything that I could to put money in my bank account to make sure I was working and to make sure that I was providing for myself as best as I could, right? After I, right before I turned 20, so I was 19 after my sophomore year of college, I dropped out because I went home to, I went home to my hometown 
and I got this letter in the mail for um, from Vector Marketing. And a couple of my friends were there and it was recruiting me for this job. It was like, hey, you know, we're looking for college kids and blah, blah. And two of my friends that were there read it and they were like, I think that's a scam. And I was like, so? <laughs> Not so, but I'm like, why do you think that? And my friend Laurel was like, my brother went and did that. And it's like selling like kitchen stuff to your friends and family. Like I wouldn't bother. Everybody was telling me no, but I'm like, I'm gonna go check it out. I go and I check out this job. It is cold calling sales. It's selling $2,000 sets of knives. And I was like, I can do that. <laughs> so I decided to do it. And uh, I went and sold knives that summer, dropped out of college because I, I sold like 60 grand in my first summer, which was crazy. And uh, then I went on to do that for two years, um, selling like a hundred grand a year in kitchen knives to strangers, which by the way, part of this process, I left school. I left every single person I knew, all my friends behind. I moved down to Kansas City to do this Cutco thing. I didn't know anybody there, not just socially, but I didn't know any customers that I could have down there. So I had to come up with customers from scratch, okay? Talk about creating your own pipeline. Like this is, this is a business where people are supposed to sell to friends and family. I had none, okay? So I had to create a list myself, which I did successfully, I did very well. And then I got recruited into this crazy roof sales job, which <laughs> was even scarier. I didn't even know that insurance restoration was a thing, first of all, but I said, okay, when somebody said, I want you to sell everything that you have because you're not gonna have a permanent home for a while and travel around the world like a roof sales gypsy or around the country like a roof sales gypsy chasing storms and selling roofs. And I'm like, it doesn't really sound like what I wanna do, but <clears throat> I'll do it. <laughs> and I did that very, very well. And then after I sold roofs for several years, you know, I was averaging, Basically my average, I didn't have to work all year long. So when I say this year I worked or I sold, it, it's really about months. So I was averaging 160K a month. That's what I was selling. So I was doing really well with the roofing stuff. Um, during this time, still battling massive depression. <laughs> um, depression, eating disorders, I was weak, I was tired. I like, for anybody that's dealt with clinical depression, you know what, what it's like. It's like, you can't even, get out of bed like you can't you're in a fog you're in a dark fog at all times like you're just on autopilot it's a miracle that you're doing anything but I was muscling through that and I was chasing whatever I, my dream and my dream was simply financial freedom it wasn't I'm gonna do this for a living you know or like whatever it was just I wanted to make it I didn't want to worry about money I wanted to be able to do whatever I wanted to do whenever I wanted to do it right so did that until 2014 when I created Roof Sales Mastery. I was like, all right, I've developed some amazing skills here doing what I've done. I'm going to put it all together. Wrote the book, wrote six different online programs, put all that stuff together and created nearly a seven figure business that I am running today. And I'm sharing all of this with you because I want to make one main point. I'm not where I am today because I had rich parents that paid for my life. I haven't received a single dollar from anybody since I was 19. Not a dollar. I haven't asked for a handout from anybody. I've made my own way. I'm not in this position because I waited until I just found what I loved. I did what I fucking had to do for a long time. Years and years and years of grinding, hustling, doing shitty jobs, doing really hard jobs, suffering through like mental illness. I did it not because I wanted to and it was my passion, but because I had to do it or I chose to do it. I was doing what I had to do until I could do what I wanted to do. I didn't get this handed to me. I didn't get help. <laughs> in fact, I haven't even had a relationship with my family for six years now going on. That's a long story in and of itself, but I've been kind of a lone ranger. You know, I, my former husband, we were kind of like teammates, partners, but I did all the selling. He always dealt with just the back end stuff, paperwork, whatever. I've always been the one that's going out and hustling. If I was knocking doors or making cold calls or climbing around in the heat or <clears throat> flipping fucking <laughs> tacos or whatever it was that I had to do, I did it. And I wanted to share that with you guys today because I want you to take a look at where you are right now. And I never like to compare and say, here's the yardstick where you should be at this point in your life. But if you're not where you want to be, I'm not saying compare yourself to anybody else, but if you're not where you need to be and you're of a certain age or you've done so much and it's been this long, what is your failure story that you're married to? Because success doesn't happen by luck. It doesn't happen because you have a rich mommy and daddy. Those are factors that some people get to bank on. 
But I'm here to raise my hand right now and say, well, that's not what I did. And I didn't have that. <laughs> my parents did well, but they didn't supply my life. They paid for two semesters of college and that was it. Or four semesters of college, two years. That was it. <laughs> and then I'm pretty sure they cut me out of the will. So <laughs> Becca, what'd you do? It's a long story. So that's it. Where are you today? Why aren't you there? What's your excuse? Is it even valid? Probably not. I'm here today and I shared all of that with you to empower you and show you that your success is literally up to you. And sometimes you're gonna have to do shit you don't wanna do, that you don't like, and sometimes you don't have direction. But you can have excuses or results, but you cannot have both. Switzer out. <laughs>